Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. We have x to the power 27 equals 27 to the power x squared. And we're going to be solving for x values. At this point, you can go ahead and pause the video and try to guess the solution because one of the solutions can be easily guessed. What about the others? Or is there only one solution? Let's find out. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and manipulate this equation a little bit. And we can do this in so many different ways. I want to show you different alternatives, OK? First of all, I can write this 27 to the power x squared as 27 to the power x to the power x, because x times x is equal to x squared. Make sense? And then I can kind of cube root both sides. That's actually what I'd like to do. So I can write this as x to the power 9 to the third. And to be able to cube root this, I'm going to think about 27 as 3 to the third power. So we can kind of write this as 3 to the power x to the power x and then finally cubed. So my goal is to take the 3 all the way on the outside so that we can cancel it out by raising both sides to the power 1 third. Of course, we're working in the real world in this case. Are there any complex solutions? That's a good question. Okay. Now, we, from here, we basically get the following. By the way, I didn't have to do this. I could probably just leave it at 27 to the x squared. I just realized. And then write this as 3 to the power x squared to the third. So forget about all of this. Just forget it. I could erase that too, right, I guess. OK, let's just totally clean that up and focus on this way. So we can kind of turn this and we can cancel these out, right? Obviously, those two are equal, so I can do both as a cube root of both sides. OK, so this kind of gives us a nicer expression, which I can write as x to the power 9 equals 3 to the power x squared. A little simpler. You know, the numbers are a little smaller. So one thing I can do at this point is I can log both sides. And the base doesn't really matter since we have x as a variable base and 3 is a numerical base. I'm going to use the natural log, OK? So let's ln x to the 9 and ln 3 to the power x squared. We can go ahead and move the powers. That's going to give us 9 ln x equals x squared ln 3. Obviously, at this point, you probably, if you haven't seen that solution before, hopefully you know the obvious solution, right? OK. If you still don't see it, let's go ahead and put the variables on one side. So I can kind of write this as maybe ln x divided by x squared, and this one is ln 3 divided by 9. Now take a good look at this. If x is equal to 3, then x squared is going to be 9. Make sense? So x equals 3 is obviously a solution. You see that? OK, great. So, but the million dollar question is, is x equals 3 the only solution? Are there any negative solutions? Are there any complex solutions? Those are all Good questions. But we're going to be looking at this problem from different angles. And hopefully that'll give you, uh, you know, a good idea how to approach these kinds of problems. So my kind of second approach to this problem is, let me rewrite the original one. x to the power 27 equals 27 to the power x squared. And then I'm going to go ahead and use substitution here. Because I have an x squared in the uh, exponent here, that kind of bothers me. Yeah, I want to get rid of that. And how can I do it? Just by setting it equal to a variable with the first power. So let's go ahead and set x squared equal to t. And of course, if we're dealing with real numbers here, we have to assume that t is positive, right? Obviously, t needs to be positive. Not only that, I want t to be a nice value, OK? I'll tell you in a little bit what that means. So if x squared is equal to t, then x is going to be the square root of t. And this also shows that t must be positive. Now, you might be saying, well, aren't there two solutions for x? Like, x could also be the negative square root of t. If you do that, you're probably not going to get any solutions. I haven't tried it, but you're more than welcome to try. And let me know how that goes. Anyways, maybe that gives complex solutions. Who knows? But I haven't tried it. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Uh, x will be replaced with square root of t, and then raise it to the power 27. And this will be 27 to the t. Well, we were trying to get rid of the square, but then we 
have now a radical, which is fine because we can get rid of that. Make sense? So we can kind of write the square root of t as t to the power one half, and then just multiply by 27 because those are two exponents. And then we can kind of write it this way. t to the power 27 over two equals 27 to the power t. This is the fun part. We're gonna get rid of the two in the denominator. I don't like fractions. Do you like fractions? Well, I kind of like them, but not too much. <laughs> So let's go ahead and, you didn't see that three, right? Let's go ahead and square both sides. Awesome. The twos are gonna cancel out, giving us t to the power 27 equals, now I'm gonna square 27, which you should know that that's 729 to the power t. Of course, the exponent is not gonna change. Well, is this any better? Yes, you'll see in a little bit why this is really cool, because we're going to use a little bit of divisibility criteria here, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just guessing, because of this base, t is going to be a power of 3. Okay, of course, in this case, I'm assuming that um, t is probably going to be an integer or maybe a rational number like 1 third, 1 ninth, a again, a power of 3. So I'm going to go ahead and set t equal to 3 to the power n. We're using a lot of substitution because substitution is fun. Do you enjoy that too? Anyways, if you replace t with 3 to the n, you'll get 3 to the n to the power 27 equals 729, which I can write, by the way, as 81 times 9. That should be 3 to the 6th power or 27 squared, right? 3 to the 6th to the t. And now this gives me 3 to the power 27n equals 3 to the power 6t. So 27n is the same thing as 6t. So 27n equals 6t. Divide by 3, you get 9n equals 2t, or not 2t, if, uh, uh, if, if you are a tutor, I just couldn't say. Okay, great. So this is nice, and this is where the divisibility comes in. If you're looking for integer solutions, obviously, you want n to be a 2 or any multiple of 2, right? At the same time, keep in mind that you want t to be a power of 3. So this kind of gives you t equals 9, which is a power of 3. So we might as well just play with t a little bit. t equals 9 works, right? Because that gives us n equals 2. And guess what? t is equal to 3 to the n. So if n is 2, t is definitely 9. So check, check. Great. So this kind of works. And all I'm interested in is in t. So t equals 9. But guess what? t is equal to 3 to the n. But I don't really care about n. I care about x. And x is equal to the square root of t. So from here, x will be 3 as before. Remember, we found x equals 3 just by inspection. You did, right? Hopefully. And then it was verified one more time. Now, are there any other possible values? You can test it out. Like try another power of um, 3, like maybe 27. But uh, that's going to give you 54. And that's going to give you n equals 6. But you kind of have to plug it in. Oh, by the way, sorry about that t also needs to be a perfect square. Great. Power of 3 and a perfect square. So that kind of gives you even powers of 3. In other words, the next one you should test is 81. And if that's the case, n should be, hmm, let's see, uh, 162. If, if I divide 81 by uh, 9, that's going to be a 9. And then I have to divide, uh, multiply by 2. That should be an 18. But if t is 81, that means x is going to be 9, right? Does that work? Let's go ahead and test it out. x to the power 27 equals 27 to the x squared. If x is 9, that's going to give me x to the power 27. And here I'm going to be getting 27 to the power 81. Probably not because this has a smaller base and a smaller exponent. No way this is going to work. And after these values, obviously, they're going to be much more apart. So we kind of have to stop here. We can go backwards, try maybe t equals 1 or t equals 1 over 9, so on and so forth, right? Anyways, I'll stop here because I need to show you something else. And here's the thing. x to the 9th equals 3 to the power x squared. Remember, I told you, is there another solution? Let's go ahead and look it up, right? Let's check it out. First of all, the graphs of these two functions doesn't fit if you use Desmos, obviously. But you can tell they're getting closer, so hopefully they'll intersect, right? And if you look at Wolfram Alpha, there are two intersection points. One of them is going to be somewhere here, I think. I don't know, maybe somewhere else. And then the other one is going to be something like this. And if you look at the integer solution, yes, x equals 3 is verified. But, uh-oh, we get another solution that's not an integer, 
Try to remember that value, okay? You memorized it? Okay, we'll go back and take a look at it from another angle. Ready? Cool. Now, in this equation, I can do the following. First of all, notice that I have x squared here. So I'm going to turn this into x squared. How? With hocus pocus or math magic. I'm going to raise both sides to the power 2 ninths, and that does the trick. Guess what? 9 cancels out, and I get x squared. Isn't that cool, these tricks? And then this is 3 to the power 2 over 9 times x squared. So I kind of got x squared here and x squared there. My goal is to be able to use Wolfram Alpha. Wait, did I say that? Okay, I meant Lambert's W function. You know, it has a W too, right? But that's WA. So to be able to do that, I do need something like T e to the T. So I'm going to use natural logs here. 3 can be written as e to the power ln 3. If you plug it in, this is going to be e to the power 2 over 9 ln 3 times x squared. And this is just going to be x squared. Notice that we have an x squared here. We have we kind of have our t, but the whole thing is t. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this. So it's going to look like this. x squared times e to the power negative 2 over 9 ln 3 times x squared. And all we need is negative 2 over 9 ln 3 on both sides. And of course, this is equal to 1 because the reciprocals multiplied gives us 1. And now I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 2 over 9 ln 3, and that'll do the trick. And instead of 1, I'm just going to have that number, because 1 is the identity, and so on and so forth. Now, if you apply Lambert's W function to this, like W of this, if you do W, you're going to get the T, which is this. So it's going to be negative 2 over 9 ln 3x squared. Of course, I should include that too. Sorry about that. This is my t. And then that should equal negative 2 over 9 ln... Wait a minute. Did I... Are you are you sure this is the right answer? Okay. Let me double check because look, I'm, looks like I'm getting uh, something weird from here. So I had a 1 here and then I multiplied both sides by this. Let me go ahead and double check this. Uh, negative 2 over 9, I should probably write it like this, negative 2 ln 3 over 9, multiply by x squared, okay, and that should equal, and I had the e to the power negative, okay, let me redo this, uh, there's an x squared here, okay, and that was equal to 1, right? Okay, that's equal to negative 2 ln 3 over 9, and when I do the Lambert's, I mean Lambert's W function, it should give me the Lambert's W of this, which is negative 2 ln 3 over 9 x squared equals W of this number. Exactly. That's where we get the numbers from. And if you solve for x squared, divide both sides by this and then square root both sides and so on and so forth. And this was a long video, so I apologize. But anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.